Good day everyone and welcome back to another beautiful video on our channel. In this video you are going to watch my experience of visiting the Perth Mint in Perth, Western Australia. Western Australia is the biggest state in Australia which has the biggest mining industry in the country and produces a lot of minerals and metals every year. The Perth Mint is one of the places which manufactures and sells gold, silver and platinum collector coins bullion bars and luxury jewellery in Australia. The world biggest coin is also displayed in the Perth Mint which is a one ton gold coin and worth more than 90 million dollars. I went there on a guided tour, learnt about the history, looked around the place, witnessed the world biggest gold coin, participated in gold bullion bar pouring demonstration and visited their shop at the last. You guys are going to watch all of that in this video and make sure you subscribe and hit the bell icon to watch more videos like this. This place is situated in the Perth city. It's an old building like a palace and at the entrance you can find the Australian indigenous flag, national flag and Torres Strait Island flag flying. Going past through the gate, you can see a statue of a couple of gentlemen named William Ford and Arthur Bailey. They were the first ones to find gold officially in Western Australia. I went inside and after some time, our two guides started explaining us about the gold mining and Perth Mint's history. And I'm gonna be your tour guide for the day. Well, so for the first half part in here, I will introduce a bit of the fun story and history we had back in the old days in Perth Mint here and later on as you can see I already wear my fireproof uniform so which means I'm also is the poor poor guy to do the gold pour so this section of Perth used to go Berlu it used to belong to the Pirachop area so the Wajak clan of the Nunga nation they are the traditional custodian of the land so that's why I'm glad to use a Nunga language to do the greeting with you. And we also have an amazing mosaic here to celebrate. The title of it is Pretty Country. So at the bottom, you can see some rivers, hills and deserts. But more important, the gold nugget very underneath the desert. Well, I, I, I assume you must have heard about the super pit today. So even though today, if you want to do any gold prospecting, if you would like to search for gold, you still need to travel to the middle of nowhere, to the desert, to Kaguli, to do any gold prospecting. That works the same way back in the old days. But the only difference is, back in the old days, the old school gold prospector, they may have to cycle to there. Uh, and in some extreme cases, they may even have to carry the wheelbarrows hiking for 14 days to do any gold prospecting. So that was a very harsh condition for them. And yeah, it looks like now I can finally start with some history about our Perth Mint. Mm, maybe I should start with the most common question people ask. That would be why we built a Perth Mint at the first place, right? So actually, it's about two gentlemen over there, the Arthur Bailey and William Ford. Those two gentlemen, they made the very first major discovery of gold in Western Australia here, and eventually lead to gold rush. So how did it happen? They had been doing gold prospecting for seven years. They got nothing until one night when they were doing gold prospecting in a place called Fryfram next to Kogali. In 1892. Uh, so at, mid, at, at night, they were so tired, they just want to rest a bit. So they put on their feet, set up a campsite, lit up the bonfire, put down all the gear, just get some rest. But at midnight, a very heavy storm hit them real hard. And literally, the heavy raining and the fresh frog, it washed away everything they had. 
It feels so desperate. Well, but the morning night, it was telling a very different story. So when they were trying to pick up all the gears, they lost. On the next morning, they noticed something shiny sitting on the ground. Here, there, everywhere. Gold nugget pieces. Well, they managed to pick up at around 17 kilograms gold nugget pieces. That's a lot. 17 kilograms. They want to keep it as a secret. They don't want to share a cut with others. So they bring up the gold nugget to the bank. Well, but however, the banker feel they were suspicious. Why? Because they just experienced a fresh fraud. They just like homeless. They came out of no they came out from nowhere with such a huge amount of gold. So those two gentlemen over there, they had to explain where and how they found the gold nugget pieces. Uh, and unfortunately, there was no any privacy policy back then. Which means word get around, rumor get around, and on the headline of the newspaper in the next morning, it was written, Australian sand made of gold. <laughs> well, people took it literally, and they started to bring a little shovel, start the game. On where? On the beaches. Did they find anything? Absolutely. No, nothing they found. <laughs> well, they learned the hard way. Ah, uh, but anyway. This event eventually led to gold rush, and we were just a tiny colony back then, a home to 40,000 people. But just over the next three years, in 1895, our population has been tripled from 40,000 to 150,000. And in the meanwhile, our first premier, Sir John Forrest, he was thinking, eh, why not we have our own mint? Because we will show up, found gold. But they bring all the gold to the east coast, to the royal mint of Sydney and Melbourne. People cash in, melt it down, buy business, do investment. But there was no any economy benefit for our local community here. So that's why our first premier, he spent the whole year trying to persuade the British government to sign off the construction in here. And he did it. In 1896, Hearst Mint started to build and in 1899, door. After listening to an interesting session about the gold mining history of Australia, we went to see the inside of the Perth Mint. The first place we visited is the display of the world's biggest gold coin. The biggest giant gold coin, the solid gold coin ever made in human history. One ton gold over there. Uh, well, so more precisely, it would be 1,012 kilograms, 80 centimeter, 80 centimeter, 80 centimeter wide, and 12 centimeter deep. Uh, but why did we make it? Well, actually, it's about summer on a giant gold coin, the Queen Elizabeth II. So back in 2012, Her Majesty had a royal visit to our Australia here. We would like to celebrate, so that's why we made it. And yeah, she loved it. She was so into it. But sadly, she couldn't take it back home. So, people are always wondering how much it's gonna move. Well, it depends. It got three different values. For the first value, the face value. So if you look at the dish, underneath spring space, you can see so many zeros. So, if you are super strong, like a superman, or maybe a wonder woman, you can literally lift it up and roll it to the produce bank. So the banker have no choice but to give you one million dollars, because that's the face value of the giant gold coin. Well, but I won't do so my friend. It's something related to the second value, the gold market value. So if you look at the screen in front of you, it may show the day's gold market price. So, what are you looking at? The giant gold coin. It's gonna move over 90 million. 90 million. There was also a display board just below the gold coin showing how that coin was made.
After the gold coin, we went to see the biggest gold nugget found in human history. So now I'm gonna present you our 99.9% pure plastic replica. The biggest gold nugget found was around 71.5 kilogram and it's worth of 6 million Australian dollars now. Finishing those two displays, when I went to the next section, I saw an old bicycle which was used back in the days by a gold miner to go around and find gold. In a glass display cabinet, there were some gold nuggets displayed which were extracted from different places in Australia. The largest Australian native silver specimen was also displayed in that cabinet. It was so shiny and beautiful. There were some photos displayed which showed us how they melted the gold and made coins and bars. Few machineries and equipment which were used to produce gold and silver coins were also kept in that small museum for display. In another place, they have displayed some different kind of safety guns which were used by the guards to safeguard this place back in the days. Next to the guns, there were some real gold bullion bars were displayed, but they were well secured inside a strong cell and a glass cabinet around them. While I was roaming around that exhibition area, our guide dragged us into their laboratory for a demonstration show about how gold nuggets are melted and made into a gold bullion bar. So, I got a aluminium bronze reinforced apron. Then in the middle, I got Kevlar, so it, it's fireproof. So on top, I got my fireproof smoke. I got a long sleeve fireproof uniform. So, well, now I will wear the rest of my gear. And also because you cannot hear about me. You can't, you can't hear about me when I'm wearing, uh, when I'm wearing a face shield. So, I will walk you through what step I will have to indicate you which moment will be the best moment to take photos and videos. So, first step. I will turn off the light, uh, nothing special. I just enjoy some dramatic chemistry. Then I'm gonna turn off the furnace. I'm brave, but I'm not stupid. Then I walk quickly to here. Open up the lid, lock the arm in. Use the external tongs to extract the blue smoke out of a 1200 degree burning furnace. Put it onto the table. This is a boring pond. You can give me more support when I do the gold pole.
and we die. Because Paul is a very good conductor, it only takes 90 seconds to become completely solid. So that's why I know we live fast on every move. Can that be me? Five, four, three, two, one. one. Here we go. Wow. A fresh made go bar, still really hot. You can see the frame coming out. And ta-da! Wow. Fresh made go bar. You can hear the sizzle. Ground is still about 800 degrees. So I better put it back in the water tank. Pull it down. And I guess I deserve to cool off a bit, right? <laughs> nice and cool. So I, now I'm gonna put it bit on to the out and dry it out. Just in case it slips through my hand. <laughs> Ooh la la, our freshly made giant, uh, our freshly made gold bar, which is 6 kilograms, roughly equal to 200 dry pounds. And looks like now, we also come to the end of our tour. So thank you so much for attending my tour. Before you carry on, make sure, before you leave our exhibition area, make sure put your hands onto the 12 kilogram gold bar over there. And unfortunately, I am not allowed it to hand over this 6 kilogram gold bar to any general public. But my point is, if you can put your hands onto the 1 million 12 kilogram gold bar, why trouble the half million dollars? Well, yeah. Just doesn't make sense. Make no sense, to be honest. Yeah. Uh, but, so, around the corner, the scale. And next to the scale, we got a mini machine. I assume every one of you have a token, right? So, put the token into that great mini machine next to the scale. It will mint your coin, which is more convenient. We have our customer experience survey, our feedback form. So if you if you enjoy my tour, my name is Oliver. But if you don't, my name is Austin. <laughs> it was a great show. After the demonstration, I resumed walking around the exhibition area and as our tour guide mentioned, I went to touch and lift the 12 kilogram gold bullion bar. It was inside a glass cabinet, well secured with cameras and lights. Actually, it was a little bit heavy to lift that as well. Then inside a cabinet, I saw some gold sovereigns. World's first class gold coins were displayed in it. As a funny thing, there was also a weight machine on which we can stand and it would let us know how worthy we are. I stood on the machine and it informed me I am worth of $7.5 million. Woo, that was a surprise. Then in another glass cabinet, the first coins made in Australia were displayed. There were also other different kind of old coins made of gold, silver and bronze were displayed in another cabinet. They were very shiny, bright and very beautiful. Olympic medals which were made for the Olympics conducted in 2000 in Sydney, Australia were also there. There were also some other specially made coins displayed with goats, goddess symbols and also with other different signs and symbols. The staff there also said that we can choose any of them and they will print it for us. The last place I visited in the Perth Main is their small gift shop in their ground floor.
there were plenty of gold bullion bars which would worth around hundreds of thousands of dollars. There were a lot of different varieties of jewels made of gold, white gold, silver and platinum. They also had many memorial gift items made of gold and silver. As a symbol of memory of visiting the Perth Mint, I bought a key tag and a gold pendant from that shop. That is the end of this video guys. I learned a lot of things by visiting this place and I hope you would have learned something too. If you enjoyed this video tour around the Perth Mint, leave a thumbs up on this video, subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon. I will see you all in another beautiful video. Till then, thanks for watching and cheers.